Welcome to 2021's National Queer Arts Festival. We are so happy that you could join us this year. We know it's been a hard year in the pandemic and we're grateful to be here in community with you today. Make sure that at the end of this show, you fill out a survey. It's what helps us to continue to fund these brilliant artists. And it is more than my pleasure to announce this incredible lineup of emerging artists. Oh, this cohort is absolutely brilliant. They teach me more and more every day. Their visions continue to grow. Their mission is very clear. And they say that the future is now. So we will begin tonight's showcase with Mandela. Mandela Masani is bringing us the Ghetto Gospel, a brilliant piece and collaborative. The future is free. The Dwayne Calizo Artist Residency Showcase this year is a kaleidoscope that reflects many colors of movement and how it pushes us forward and beyond. The time is now because the future is free. Ghetto Gospel breaks down the brick wall forged between Mandela and the world. This show will reveal Mandela's journey to self-love through all his ups and downs. He wants people to find their own strength in his vulnerability. Mandela Masani, and this is his Ghetto Gospel. Mandela, you are ungrateful. 
say this king is from the jungle, I would have to agree. See, I'm a cage lion, I was born not free. You took my mother, you shattered her innocence, all while blaming me. See, this is your definition of freedom. Jay-Z said, why are the new slaves 2016? For every woman that was raped, for every man that was beaten, for every child that was taken, I stand for you. See, I'm a child of a queen. I was born cleansed. Her cycle never stopped. I am past, I am present, and I'm all that will ever be. Know who you are, know yourself, know who you are. Be yourself, know who you are. Trust yourself, know who you are. Love yourself, know who you are. Know yourself, know who you are. Be yourself, know who you are. Trust yourself. I'm a young kid, of shit.
See? Now I gotta get a drummer sound. Drummer girl, where you at?
I need you to take me to church one time. Up in the Dwayne Calizo Emerging Artist Residency Showcase, we have Nakia Rideout. Nakia Rideout is debuting their show, This Ain't Home. And Nakia Rideout 
shares that home, there is no place like it. But for a queer, non-binary black American, where is it exactly? In the midst of a global pandemic, the continuation of anti-blackness, brutality, and the ongoing patterns of displacement, this ain't home, explores the great migration and its influences that are still prevalent today. Inspired by Isabel Wilkerson's The Warmth of Other Suns, Nakia Rideout blends music, poetry, and visuals to witness black Americas and their legacy of survival to find peace and safety. What is home? Where will it be? Welcoming to the stage, Nakia Rideout's new piece, This Ain't Home. Because I always feel like running. Not away. Because there's no such place. Because if there was, I would have found it by now. I run my way, I run my race What is this life if we ain't running towards a grave? Am I running for freedom or just running from a cage? Most days I feel I'm running in place Caught in the headlights, so running wild and playing it safe Yo, I stay awake, I'm restless, my dreams running away I'm running out of time, should I speed up or keep pace? Go after mine and pay mine or what they think Yo, this path is mine, they can never lead the way We wake up running, the alarm goes off, we snooze, and now we running late. If it was hot, the fans running, let it be cold, and listen as the heater runs. Our feet hit the ground, mom running on a million things before you even clock in, like I, I need to run over that presentation, or I need to run over why I'm running late. And then there's water, faucet, shower, toilet, fridge, light. And there we are practically running a marathon before running out the door to start a day. What well, all runs? Um, water run. Um, electricity run. Cars run. Time run, nose run, eyes run, feet run, <laughs> um, the world runs, of what, um, what was it that made you run, what causes you to run now? And how are your movements now different from last year, from five years ago, from ten years ago? How is it parallel? Do you think you'll be running forever? Or is it just seasons you run? What does running signify to you? How does running improve life? How does running become detrimental to life um, and what does that look like
Did grandma run? Did mama run? There are days, this is one of them, when you wonder what your role is in this country and what your future is in it. Something creeping, peeping through the window. Moonlight shining like a drink for the sinners. I left a state for the state of my mental. With no dollar or dream, just a civic with tinted windows. Hoping I could see the way for my free. Shake the shackles off and head back to my kinfolk. Hand them off the key and get back on the road. Found myself in Cali. Running on my feet like. Miles, miles, nothing but miles, tracks, railroads, dirt roads, muddy roads, no roads, no maps, no signs, and no nothing but miles, miles, nothing but miles, sun shedding skin, snakes slither, hissing, rattling, warnings of danger, danger lost its threat, sunken down in muds, river puns, lakes lost its threat, no one tries to outrun freedom, only a few can waver, catch, catch the faces, family fleeing the south, scattering, rummaging, crossing Mississippi, rivers, Arkansas swamps, cursed, cursed, but blessed be the builders and the victims in the system trapped. Century later, reverse. My people pushed out, pulled in, always in motion, never settled. We know this ain't home. This place can never be. Home is forever where we are. Home will be the galaxy. Home will be the moon. Home will be Timbuktu, if that's what we decide. I, too, left out, searching for the warmth of other suns. I, too, left behind the soil that grew my roots from the ground up and still... That ain't home. Home is wherever we are. I carry the warmth of my own sun. They carried the sun to New York, Chicago, Detroit, L.A., Oakland, all the while hoping, all the while knowing, all the while glowing, fighting, surviving, running, ran, run, melanin dripping gold from the warmth of our own suns. 
This ain't home. Nah, 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 nah. This right here. This right here. This ain't home. <laughs> yeah. Truth is, I've been gone. Yeah. This body ain't home. This land ain't free. Yeah. Bags of hand, I'm trying to go from it. They try to drown us out, but we grow from it. Couldn't kill us off, and that's more coming. I give him my all, and that's more coming. That's abundance, we abundant. Like a pot of grandma greens that was homegrown. Been running for free for about so long. Survived everything that could go wrong. Only to find that the soul's home. The world is ours, stars is too. Shit, we ain't here to stay, we just lying through. They saw to make a way, and I'm gonna see it too. See it through, see it true. Like, like. Next up in our Dwayne Calizo Emerging Artist Residency, we have Cesar Cadavis with two pandemics and an insurrection. A brilliant new piece coming forward this year for our 2021 festival. During these times of COVID-19 intersecting with the wave of uprisings in our communities, hashtag Black Lives Matter, hashtag Stop Asian Hate, Immigrant Rights and Children in Cages, Hawaiian Sovereignty and Indigenous Rights, hashtag Land Back, Cesar's solo performance weaves personal stories of being a gay Filipino man and long-term survivor living with HIV as he enters his 60th year on this earth. Put your warm hands together for Cesar's. The first time we were shut down in March of 2020, it was out of the urgency of facing something that we had never experienced before. People were shut away in their homes and an unnerving quiet settled over the city. We had very little information about this virus. In fact, they had just officially named it COVID-19 a few weeks before the shelter in place was ordered. While we didn't know much about it, there were some suggested guidelines. We should start using hand sanitizer wash our hands at, for at least 20 seconds and disinfect everything. Doorknobs, door handles, TV remotes, car keys or groceries, even those Amazon boxes that got delivered. It was pretty surreal. You had to find the right sort of hand sanitizer, wipes and house cleaners to make sure that it was a type that killed this mysterious virus. There were shortages of toilet paper, paper towels, bleach and cleaning products. Grocery stores had shelves of pasta and canned goods wiped out, gone, just sitting empty. And you couldn't see anyone outside of your home, not your friends, not family. I had friends who couldn't see their elderly parents for a year or more. If you were one of the lucky ones, you were able to work from home. If you weren't, you were on the front lines and running the risk of being exposed. You had to assume that people might have COVID since there were folks who had it and didn't know it. Then there were the masks. It was confusing at first, saying they suspected it might be airborne, but masks were not necessary. At the same time, there was a big shortage of surgical masks for frontline workers. And you heard stories of people reusing their masks and other personal protective equipment. If these masks were so important, then why weren't they important for everyone? After weeks of being cooped up, I took my dogs out for a walk, but decided to go farther than just around the block where I lived. I walked down the hill into the Castro, and in my 20 plus years of living here, I'd never seen it like this. The bars, restaurants, and shops were closed, boarded up with the expectation that the shutdown was indefinite. There was hardly anyone on the streets. It was like there had been some sort of apocalypse. The overwhelming cases of COVID, people getting sick and dying, alone in their rooms. If there were no rooms, right there in the hallway of the hospitals. Families not even being able to be with their loved ones to hold their hands, to make sure they weren't scared and sick and alone. 
night after night, more news reports of cases of COVID-19 and deaths, a lot of death. For many of us who live in San Francisco in the 1980s, the experience of the beginnings of COVID felt like the haunting of a previous life. Before I moved to San Francisco, I remember being home in Hawaii and seeing a brief article in the local newspaper about a gay cancer. It was killing men. Men were dying in Los Angeles, New York, and San Francisco, and they didn't know what it was. I was a young man who was about to embark on a journey of sexual discovery and freedom, so that felt pretty ominous to me. Back then, I had no point of reference, no personal experience or history of what this might mean or what it might become. I came to San Francisco in 1984. Navigating life as a recently out gay man in a new city in the middle of an epidemic was a challenge full of conflicting experiences. While there was joy in discovering spaces where I felt at home and safe and celebrated, those were also the very spaces where we felt the fear of our deepening reality. It started to feel like our friends and acquaintances just went missing. Sometimes I go out to our community spaces, bars and clubs to find out what happened to some of my friends. Rico had a partner who died from AIDS and now he was sick too. You know, I didn't know you could get one of those beds that you see in hospitals brought into someone's home. Sonny lived in an apartment right across the street from the 16th Street BART station. He always worked out and was healthy and had this beautiful body. He was so ashamed as he progressed to AIDS and he started to lose so much weight. Once I was able to coax him out of his apartment, we went to a movie. He held my hand in that dark theater through the whole show. Michael, I could hardly recognize because of the cancerous lesions on his face and body. All I could do was give him a massage to help ease his pain so that he could fall asleep. Douglas was dying, but he made sure we paid his bills because he didn't want to have bad credit. Fernando didn't give a shit about what people thought, no matter what he looked like. For as long as he could, he wanted to enjoy a meal at his favorite restaurants. In 1989, I found out that I, that I was HIV positive. People have this idea about folks who have HIV. It's God's wrath for gay men that who we love and how we love is a sin. Or if you got HIV, it's because you're promiscuous and sexually irresponsible. Now, even though the prevailing thought back then was with AIDS was that if you're gay, you will get AIDS and you will die. It was important to find out what we were dealing with, what caused it, how exactly do you catch it, what it does to your body and why. If we could just get an understanding of it, we might be able to survive it. Given that Western medicine hadn't been very helpful in that regard, people began to, began to look for, towards holistic approaches. So there was this heightened interest in acupuncture, Reiki, Chinese medicine, crystals, and even massage therapy to lessen the stress on an immune compromised body. Like a lot of people who had HIV, I began to establish this intimate understanding of my body, what caused fevers, what caused chills or body aches, what kind of foods upset my stomach, what was the relationship between stress or mental health on how my body was living each day? I began to live my life in a way that I was very conscious about how my body felt when I moved, when I breathed, when I slept, and when I woke up in the morning. As each year passed, I saw people around me get sick and die, but I was still here. People started to try different drugs like AZT, which helped some folks and it actually reduced the transmission of HIV from mother to child. But most of the folks I post personally knew went through so much agony that it seems like it hastened their death. It was very confusing time for me to have to make decisions on how to live as if your life depended on it. Life and death decisions. My personal decision was to wait and see how other drugs or therapies worked or didn't work. My T cells were steady, and once we were able to test for the HIV viral load, the amount of virus in your system, that stayed consistently pretty low. Through Chinese medicine and acupuncture, I discovered a deep connection between mind and body. I was one of the lucky ones. As of today, I've been living with HIV for over 30 years. 
as year after year passed, I embraced that mindset that if I take care of myself, I will be fine. In 1994, AIDS had become the leading cause of death for all Americans ages 25 to 44. That year, I discovered these lesions on my to torso. Kaposi sarcoma, or KS, was literally the mark of AIDS in those first few years. I would see men walking in the castro with these lesions on their faces, and it would scare me, but then I had to admire their bravery, facing AIDS in the way that they did, so publicly defiant. I went to the doctor, and the diagnosis was shingles. I still couldn't breathe that as I asked the doctor, what, what does this mean? He said, it's probably due to stress. Have you been under any significant stress lately? I said, well, I just recently told my parents that I'm gay and I'm HIV positive. I'm planning a wedding. I'm moving in with my fiance for the first time. He laughed with me, but then looked at me and said, not to worry, it's not an AIDS diagnosis, but we should have a conversation about drug therapies. And I told him I wasn't ready. They were just starting to approve new drugs, but were two to three years away from understanding the effectiveness of multi-drug therapies that are being used today. In 2001, I had a bout of diarrhea, which lasted another day and another day. I mean, this shit was literally brown water coming out of me. After a week of hoping it would go away on its own, I didn't realize how weak someone could get from being dehydrated that way. I went to my doctor, they put an IV in right away and my body felt like it was coming back to life, sucking in all that fluid. Test results revealed that my viral load had shot up and I had a couple of intestinal parasites. Now, I'm not sure if you need to be a gay man to understand what I'm going to say, but I ate the wrong ass. Now, one of the intestinal parasites, Giardia, can be easily treated. The other parasite, Cryptosporidium, was another story. Back in those days, there was no effective treatment. Now, most people with a healthy system, immune system, do not need to be treated. It gets resolved on its own. For those of us with HIV or a compromised immune system, it can be life-threatening. I've known men who died after being diagnosed with cryptosporidium. When a friend of mine, Doug, was diagnosed it, with it, he died within 21 days. This was my AIDS diagnosis. My HIV doctor and I had, had had conversations over the previous months of starting on HIV meds. I was still in the considering it stage. That day, he said to me, do you remember the conversation we've been having? I think the time is now. Literally, those pills was tangible evidence of where my body was at life and death decisions. Now to my relief, my diarrhea cleared up within a day, my viral load went down to undetectable. I would not die. This June 5th, 2021 will mark the 40th anniversary of the first reports of AIDS in the US. That was in 1981. It wasn't until 1984 that they actually discovered HIV, the virus that causes AIDS a truly effective test for HIV, where you wouldn't have to wait for two weeks to find out if you're negative or positive, was not developed until 1987. When those first news article about AIDS came out, what they didn't tell us was that this was not only happening to gay white men. In fact, before 1993, there was no official US government definition of AIDS that included many of the people most impacted by the epidemic. It took leadership from black women to demand that the definition be expanded. And the effect of that was not only felt in statistics, but in people's lives. Before that, people who were suffering from AIDS, women, people who inject drugs, poor people, people of color, could not receive the treatment and resources resulting in unnecessary suffering. With the advances in developing HIV drugs over the years, my initial multiple pill treatment is now down to one pill. I take this pill every day. Still, it carries with it what it took, what it did when I took my first HIV medications. Tangible evidence, life and death. 
40 years, no cure, no vaccine, 40 years. Today, we are here to hold space for community and to speak out against the hate and violence our community has suffered. I'm Asian, so I know what it's like to be told I eat dog or called chink or Jap and told to go back to where I came from. I'm a gay man, so I know what it's like to be called faggot and beaten up and have my rigs kicked in by a bunch of haters. I'm living with HIV, so this is not my first pandemic, and I know what it's like to be part of community blamed for a virus that carries with it stigma, discrimination, fear, and sometimes violence. I'm 60 years old, so I have a deep empathy for the ageism that many of our elders experience, putting a target on their backs as they are seen as easy prey. In this past year, I've been feeling this historical trauma that feels like it's been a part of me for so long and has been felt more intensely as these surges of hate and viciousness have torn through our community. And not just the Asian community, but the LGBTQ community, the immigrant community, the women's community, the Black community. And that viciousness isn't just physical, but in policy and laws and in the mindsets we see on social media where they are told to fear us, our disease, who we love, our skin color, our gender, our sin. But it is important that we do not get caught up in the manipulations of white supremacy, where we blame one another for the virus, for poverty, for violence. That's what white supremacy does. It turns our communities against each other. And like always, we do all the work for them. Years ago, when we were fighting for our lives during the beginning of the AIDS epidemic, we would see folks go beyond and beyond the fear and treat people not like the disease they had, but as the human beings that they were. That experience told me so much about decency, about humanity in community. That is why we stand in solidarity. That is why we are here, our humanity, our decency of showing up to collectively hold space for community. We hold space and we heal. And in our healing is our defiance. Closing out this evening's Dwayne Calizo Emerging Artist Showcase, we have Nan. After joining the candidacy to be in the state's military, eight questions. If she is training to fight for her own liberation or someone else's, a outburst during training leads her to stand toe to toe with the person who inspired her to join the candidacy in the first place. Welcoming this new piece outside by Nan. Yes, ma'am. Eight is your real name? Yes, ma'am. Hmm. I can't find your last name. I don't have one, ma'am. Hmm. I see you are in class Coleman, which occupies the bottom half of our rank. Yet, at the bottom, you have the highest score. Thank you, ma'am. That wasn't a compliment. Where are you from, eight? Coordinates 41.88 degrees north, 87.63 degrees west, ma'am. LSD base. Does your family still live there? No, ma'am. Too bad. Lakeshore base is quite remarkable. Pray one day you see it. I want to talk about your 
outburst during yesterday's training. What did you say? It's important I hear exactly what you said. I asked, why are the Phoenix fighting for the state's freedom and not their own, ma'am? And there it is. Why did you join the candidacy eight? To be a starling like you, ma'am. Like me? Yes, ma'am. And do you have any idea what a starling does, eight? Defend the state. Defend the state, not question it. But with all due respect, ma'am, who is defending us? Are you getting smart with me, girl? No, ma'am. But we've been defending the state for the longest, and for what? Just to be treated like trash on the street? We? Who is we? Us. The Phoenix. <laughs> oh. Let me make this clear, eight. The we that you speak of is not us. The we that you speak of did not just talk a good game. We played it and won. We do the work you read about. So do not stand your narrow behind in front of me and talk about us. Because we are not the same. But ma'am, I really feel like we could be You so feel? Much what could you possibly feel? You have not survived long enough to feel anything. Every Phoenix, be her candidate or starling that walks into this building, knows she is to serve the state, not question it. But the state doesn't even This is not a debate. If you thought that you could be starling and defy the state, then you are gravely mistaken. And if you truly aspire to be like me, you wouldn't allow yourself to be the best of the worst. Oh, and please be sure to take this to heart as well. If I ever hear you even question the weather, I will de-wing you myself. Do you understand? Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Good. And to be sure that you understand, you have maintenance duty for a month. Be here before the sun rises. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> now I see why I never wanted to be a starling. Just a bigger cage. Yellow, not right now. You know you can always leave, right? That's easy for free spirits like you to say. Becoming a starling is how the phoenix make it outside. Right. How could I forget? Right. But you know what? If I'm really being honest with myself, this is not what I imagined. I thought if I became a starling that I could finally be heard. But again, I am reminded that who I am and what I feel is not important. Well, how do you feel? Is that concern? Curiosity at best. Figured. <laughs> I feel like God color me outside the lines. I feel like my gender evolved in time. Often I question what people take easy I never did well trying to be people pleasing Curling out by the mouth, ain't I? Ooh, she fast, ooh, she fast, ain't I? Looking up at the class, ain't I? Got a party to crash, ain't I? Pulling up, pulling up, pulling up Breaking out, feel it's rational Not irrational Awkward, unconventional as they say so typical that they never make the first page So they're afraid of what I'll say If I'm a bird, 
if it's okay If I ain't that easy on the eyes Tell me why ain't that hard to notice All my life, man, I had to fight They don't know the struggle, they just quote it Everything I say, don't doubt I wrote it And I'ma sing it for the ink dries For the lungs give, for the tears cry For I move on to my next life Popping out by the mouth, ain't I? Ooh, she fast, ooh, she fast, ain't I? Looking up at the class, ain't I? Got a party to crash, ain't I? Pulling up, pulling up, pulling up Breaking out, feel it's rational Unirational Rising up above the ashes, above the grave The one that's buried was never dead, but always brave To their surprise, he's still alive, they couldn't change The hand is dealt, and so your time defies the fate Why you always gotta make a scene? Why you never seem to know your place? Lose your voice when it's men talking The journey's long, better bring some mace You're on your own till it's time to save And you've been grown since a child's age Since a nigga tried to make a foul play Just remember what they think is our case But still we rise, we above the times yeah. Reaching for the stars, breaking up the skies yeah. Pushing life and death, overcoming trials yeah. Bodies moving mountains, but we breaking down yeah. They know the game, but still ignore the bounds And this is where the point is made now I wanna tell a story like they know it better But ain't got the courage just to break the letter Want me to give, until I give Call the movements going up in some directions Listen forward to the civil who oppress them Saying I'm the reason why they ain't progressing That's a long reach, better get to stretching That one way leading to a dead end If it ain't growing, better cut the dead end The dive's deep, better take a lesson next Mandela, why don't you give us a little tour around the room? Tell us who we're talking to. Introduce us to your brilliant cohort. I am Mandela Masani. Stars with the bars. Danielle, drummer girl. Real KMS. K Suave. Young Masani. <laughs> Mr. Billy and Manuel Berry, and together we are Vibe Music. What was the inspiration for the journey that you take us on during this show? My inspiration behind this project was just my life and wanting to tell my story and wanting to heal and do the real steps in healing and sharing with others so they can heal as well. So that young whatever, you know, who's battling being queer, battling abuse, battling whatever they're battling can know that you know, you're okay, you know? It's definitely a journey. Oh, believe me, is it, it, healing is an everyday, 24 seven, oh, I'm good, no, you're not, <laughs> you know? And that's what I'm learning right now, 
you know, um, being that I do write about affirmations, that I do write about, you know, the brighter day, but also in those brighter days, there is some darkness. Mm-hmm. And that's where the name, the ghetto gospel come from. Gospel meaning the good news. So the songs might all, all be, you know, uh, sugar cane and oh, baby, baby, but this is what I have been going through. This is what I have been feeling. This is what I needed for myself in these moments. And I hope that me being vulnerable and being what I needed, I can be that for somebody else with these stories. How does the work that you all have created speak to your personal aesthetic as an artist, as a musician, um, as a creative? I grew up in a church. Mm -hmm. Um, And I feel a lot of people grew up in the church. And in the church, I went through a lot of abuse. I went through a lot of pain. I went through a lot of trying to figure myself out. Mm-hmm. You know, just who am I? You know, if if I, if I'm loved by this almighty being, then why do I have to be a certain way? Mm-hmm. Why do I have to act a certain way? Why do I have to love a certain way? And, mm-hmm. you know, the the gospel is the good news. So this is this is me reclaiming my faith, reclaiming my spirituality, reclaiming my 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 magic mm-hmm. to where I can share my own good news, which is this ghetto gospel, you know? Yeah. It's broken. Some parts of it look fine. Some parts of it look amazing. Mm-hmm. And some of it is complete shit. And I'm happy about that. And mm-hmm. it's a culmination of everything together. And that fits my artistry as, you know, I, I don't feel I'm a Beyonce, you know, or a Jay-Z, you know? I'm a Della Masani. And that's good enough is what I'm finding through this project, you know? And that's, and that's what I bring to it. Like I, I, I bring, I bring my brokenness. I bring my doubt. I bring my hurt. I bring my pain and I go forth and, and, and I give and I, and I, and I be a vessel, you know? You also bring your son. And oh, so- <laughs> I, I want to introduce y'all. Hi. What's Hi. your name? My name is Nazem Four. Do you like Daddy's music? Oh yes. <laughs> you are my toy. Thank you for sharing a moment with me. Thanks for speaking with me. Say, say it was great wave. to talk to you, Nas. Give me a wave. Give me a wave. <laughs> See you later, sweetheart. A star is born. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's so polite. Oh. I love the multi-generational, you know, um, community and family being in the present. Got to. Stars has a little one too. Darius, him and my son be doing a thing. <laughs> Darius is a, a young and inspiring drummer, okay. singer. I'm so excited about the legacy building that's also clearly happening with intentionality here. Got to. Got just, to. Oh, just one more quick question for you all. Um, Uh, actually, uh, let me let that last question go around the room as it speaks to your aesthetic, how mm-hmm. your aesthetic is able to show up in this work and in this piece. You know, how is it, how have you been able to make it yours um, as a musician, as an artist, as a creative individual? I really like soul music. This uh, is for sure some soul music, but I haven't really been into like the 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 rock of it all like i've been more of like r&b smooth jazz type of dude you know i'm k suave for a reason right right so but but to be able to be be in here where there's like a real intentional intense energy that has a powerful message and uh that that's really what i stand for i'm already kind of like a refined hyphy anyway I love that. And so I can, you know, I can get with the with the the affirmations and, and the spirituality and the intentionalness and the messaging behind it. And then when it's time to go in, you know, I feel that too. So I, I like how we're able to to bring that all together and 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 it ebbs and flows. Like it, it's it's a story, it's a journey. It's nice even as a saxophonist, you know, most time. I play gigs by myself, you know, with my backing tracks and, you know, I'm fine, but it's still 
isn't the same as actually exchanging <clears throat> with a body of people. That's really it, you know. People have certain energy, and so uh, it's been nice to be able to already see the picture that they have been putting together, and then just add my my flavor, my little salt bay on it, you know, that? <laughs> little cherry on top, <laughs> or big cherry. We don't do little stuff around here, you know. So I, they got big picture. I got a big cherry to put on top. You know what I'm saying? I play with a lot of you know different type of people and different kind of genres, but like. This is like a different, this ain't like this, it ain't, it ain't no like label to this type of genre. I don't know, Mandela got his own kind of, you know, genre going on. So yeah, it's, 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 it's just dope to, to be a part of that. Like I said, I play for a lot of different groups and it, it hasn't been nothing like this. The, these people right here, are, you know, my family, um, yeah, we fam. Um, Uh, no, I'm not gonna cry. I just don't know what to say. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna cry. It, the experience, period, has been dope. I appreciate you know all y'all for like embracing me. You know, because I had been coming here like for like before I even started. You know, was in the collective. I enjoyed it, so I was glad that you know they chose me to you know be a part of it too. So it's just been dope. I say. And now Billy. Uh, bass is just about uh, listening and supporting. And uh, it's really great practice to listen and support in this group. Uh, like my, my own aesthetic is just trying to make Mandela's aesthetic hit harder, you know? So really listening to what Mandela is saying, what Danielle's playing, you know, bass and drums are best friends. And uh, I really like what Stars said about, about uh, refined hyphy, hyphy, sorry. <laughs> I love that. Well, we are the evolution of hyphy. <laughs> hyphy went to high school, graduated, didn't really go to college. You feel me? Had some kids and was like, I got to do this. <laughs> I love this. And in closing, Mandela, as the lead artist on this project, what has your experience been like being a part of um, this cohort, these, this residency, um, bringing this work uh, into fruition? through this process? What has that been like for you? It's been amazing. It's been painful. It's been doubtful. It's been eye-opening. It's been affirming. I mean, our first conversation years back was stripping down everything <laughs> and just me. Right, when I took out all your... <laughs> I'm just like, dang, ain't, I ain't got nobody behind me. I ain't got nobody, ain't no band, it's just me. But then that taught me that I'm enough. Yes. My words are enough. My, my ability is enough. I mean, they see me all the time. Like, how did that sound? Was, was I on point? What, what was that? Like, but just being in that moment and, and again, just being that vessel, you know? And three years, three is one of my favorite numbers. But just having that time to keep re refining, to keep making it better, to keep from that first performance to where we are now oh my gosh yes and the piece is going to keep growing mm -hmm. like there's more pieces there's more life there's more stories to tell mm -hmm. and then just see that i can do this my dream can happen mm -hmm. i can continue to tell my stories i could continue to 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 do this music to make to make this music like to be honest, I don't really listen to a lot of stuff that comes out today because to me it's trash. There's no intention. There's no, there's no magic behind it. Mm -hmm. And I feel that's what music has lost is it's magic. You know, when you listen to Roy Ayers and you listen to, you know, a lot of these people talking about a spiritual awakening, yes. you feel me? Talking about love is love. You feel me? Like, what does it matter if I kiss him or if I kiss her? Like, why are you judging me for what I choose to do in my own time? And just reclaiming that, reclaiming that, yo, I'm okay. You know, just because I was abused or because X, Y, and Z happened to me, I'm achieving from that. That is my story. Yes. And not being a victim of that, but being the victor of that and being victorious. Mm -hmm. So 
as I continue to go through my healing journey, because that's what it is, you know, this is my healing journey and I'm choosing to emote through my music. Mm-hmm. I just look forward to even more stages, you know, like taking this ghetto gospel show on the road and bringing it to other people, you know, to awaken other minds. So I'm happy that the QCC has allowed me the space and the opportunity to hold space for myself, for my stories and my folks, mm-hmm. you know, because she was like Mandela, it's just going to be you. That's what you need right now. And I don't know how many years later, now I have my people with me too, you know, showing up to the, to the meetings, showing up to the rehearsals, knocking these pieces out. That, that means a lot to just experience my stories, my hurt, my trauma, mm-hmm. and to be expressing it in this way to heal others, you know? Like, we are the future. And it takes going through our shit, seeing ourselves where we are, and affirming, our, affirming ourselves forward from that. So that's what I'm doing. Thank you all so much for this conversation. This has been a great question and answer section. We wish everyone love, peace, happiness, and soul. Thank you so much, Cesar, for such an amazing performance. Two pandemics and an insurrection. Yes, for this. <laughs> Tell me how you came to this. Like, where did this title come from? You know, how did this work move forward at this time? Um, these two pieces that I did is, are part of a larger work in progress, tentatively titled Two Pandemics and an Insurrection. Um, You know, it's been a tough year um, for a lot of things, for a lot of us, Um, not just with the pandemic, but also just kind of the um, movement in the community, Black Lives Matter, and now the Stop Asian Hate, uh, lately the uh, Free Palestine work that's been going on. So it's been building up and building up, but at the same time, there's also a historical trauma that a lot of us, particularly gay men, have experienced being in this second pandemic. Um, and I wanted to, as, as my work always tries to do, is respond to it and share um, a personal story. And so as a person living with HIV and going through this pandemic, there were just a lot of parallels that I've been experiencing this past year. And now with the Stop Asian Hate Movement around being blamed for a pandemic, Um, that's affecting a lot of folks um, was just traumatic, um, but exciting because it just exposed just some of the, pardon my language, some of the shit that goes on um, and keeps us down and oppresses us and, and fucks with our mental health. And it's been hard, but I think what's been, helping is connecting with artists through the Queer Cultural Center um, and in the community um, and to support each other because uh, we're not going through this alone. Um, And I think it's important that part of our response is through art and storytelling and dancing and song and spoken word um, and our faces. So yeah, it's again, it's a work in progress like our lives are. So um, thank you for for inviting me and having me as part of this. I'm, I'm very excited and just honored to be a part of just this list of artists that you have for this uh, festival this year. Why don't you tell me a little, or tell us a little bit about your aesthetic and how you feel like um, this piece speaks to your voice? I mean, I, I truly, truly believe that our stories are so important. Um, I was recently at um, a Stop Asian Hate rally um, uh, led and organized by GAPA, the GLBTQ Asian Pacific Alliance. Um, And what struck me was just the stories. Those speeches were stories. And I was moved by how powerful um, those stories are. And so, that's simply who I am. I'm a storyteller. Um, and I take who I am, um, where I come from. Um, I'm Filipino. I was born in the kingdom of Hawaii. And now I live on unceded 
territory here in San Francisco. And there's just a whole lot of that that impacts us. And I think it's important that we do, again, tell our history, share our trauma and our stories. Uh, so another thing that I do is also mentor other folks through the um, Gapa Theater um, to do that um, and to tell our stories. So it's part of, I guess, role modeling and mentoring um, helps me to kind of dive into my work. And that's right now just kind of the methodology that I'm doing. Um, and it's, it's, it's wonderful to kind of explore and see um, other people's processes um, as they tell their stories. For me, it's, it's a movement. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of movements going on right now in social justice and so forth. Um, and now there's an intersecting of that activism and artistry. And I, I'm just kind of um, finding my way through it and navigating a way to kind of find a way to contribute because I think that's important is that we find a way to contribute um, to everything that's going on. Thank you for that. And thank you for your contributions in our community as a whole. When we look at the journey that we take in this piece, um, can you tell me a little bit about um, how your lineage plays into this work um, and uh, what about your life journey inspired you to make this work? To me, whenever a month goes by, a year goes by, my relationship to that journey always changes. So it's interesting now to come out um, in 2021 and still look at what I've been through, um, lived, growing up in Hawaii, going through my born again Christian phase, which is in the larger piece. <laughs> um, um, and coming to San Francisco and being out as a, a newly out gay man in the middle of a devastating and frightening pandemic um, that just had so much with it, the discrimination, the violence, the, the fear, the stigma, um, but at the same time, um, there was joy. For me, that just kind of showed some resiliency, but also defiance. Um, like where I speak in this piece about men walking around with lesions on their faces in the Castro, uh, it scared us because it made AIDS real. But at the same time, to be so publicly defiant um, was just moving to me and 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 you and you had to kind of think of a way uh to respond and so part of my response is looking at my journey again and again and again and figuring out different ways to kind of share that given what's been going on and this past year um just kind of shook us a lot of folks who are living with hiv who've been through aids um the beginning of the aids epidemic and our journey um, and the, 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 the lack of response by the government, uh, the confusing messages that were sent out. Um, yes. Yeah. It's, it's just so powerful. And, and when we were starting to open back up because of COVID and the, and businesses started to open back up and I would go and, uh, go to a bar or a restaurant and so forth to a parklet and everything. And I would just sit and I would just watch people come to support these businesses to again, connect with community. Um, it was, it was some of the, it was some of the beauty and the power in, um, what was going on despite the pandemic. Um, and also just kind of being able to, physically communicate, not just about the pandemic, but other things that were going on, like George Floyd and the attack on, on a Asian elderly. to be able to have those physical conversations again um, was necessary and powerful and defiant and resilient. I've, I've heard this thing where the, the, the future determines the past. So what I've been going through really shapes and reshapes you know, who I am as a gay man, as a Filipino, as someone who's turned 60 uh, this year during the pandemic. Um, yeah, so, so thanks for letting me continue to share this evolving journey. It, it's, um, it's been cathartic just to be, be able to like, take this in a way and be creative about it and create something um, that I can share and contribute to the discourse has um, been a great, and continues to be um, a great journey in this. 
What do we have to look forward to? Um, how do we support you moving forward? Are there places where we can, other places we can find your work? I'm very fortunate to be working with Catavasco, who's been the director for this piece. Um, and we're working with Brava to kind of, uh, present the work in progress on, a, on, a, on in terms of more pieces that are part of uh, this. And um, check me out at caesarcadabas.com. There'll be some updates on um, some of those upcoming performances. I was invited to um, par participate in the United Solo Festival in New York. So we hear that New York is opening up. So hopefully um, it's a whole festival of solo performances. And I'm like, excited and nervous about that so um check out check out my website too for further updates on that oh fantastic congratulations that is wonderful um well thank you so much for being a part of this year's festival thank you so much for thriving in the midst of this pandemic thank you for thank being you oh you to be able to come to you all at the Career Cultural Center and, and check in and say, I'm a mess. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry, I haven't been able to keep up with the deadlines. Thank you, thank you for how you do this um, and, and creating, creating this festival. It's, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs>